Hi, Paul. Hi, Andrew. What's up, bitches? <laughs> Welcome to episode 21 of Building Up To It. Cheers, ah. everybody. Ah, cheers. In your honor, cheers. So I will start tonight's episode this morning. It airs at Friday at 6 a.m., so whatever that means. I'll start it by saying that we had a comment on one of the previous episodes, probably last week. Um, it was last week, because uh, Kimchi Bricks says, congrats on 20. Does the show become Bricks and Beer at 21? Oh, it couldn't and, have been better. And I am silly. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, you got to come on the show. <laughs> Is yeah. it funny that uh, it's Kimchi Bricks who made that comment, and now you have two Asians on the show right now? That's that's sure. crazy. Sure, it's hilarious. <laughs> Providence. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, well, this week I got in the mail the thing that does not exist, the booklet from Walmart, the okay. 60th anniversary. So it comes in... A paper white envelope, and inside that envelope, which I've heard everybody's getting real bent in the mail, and mine's like a little dinged up, but inside the white envelope is the black envelope, and inside looks, the black envelope it looks very classy. is the book. It is classy. It's a nice, thick, like maybe 10-page book, and in the back are these slide-out instructions for three different Ooh. things that are Ooh. all things you can build if you bought that Bricks on the Roll set. And it's, I mean, they're kind of crappy, but it's things you can build with the basic brick box. I think the best of which is probably the uh, the old camera. There you go. Okay. So these are like awkwardly folded, fold out instructions that tuck into these slits in the back page. So that's that's cool. And also the top ten Lego sets of all time, as voted on by the global AFOL community. Okay. Hey. Whoever those. Oh, hang on, you got to go through those. I want to hear well, what they ranked as the top ten. Coming in at number ten, 2008's Town Plan 10184. No, this is bullshit. Who the fuck yeah. voted for Town Plan? Yeah, I didn't vote for this. That's we that's came, like number. Hey, with golden bricks for the first time. <laughs> uh, number nine, 2002's Imperial Star Destroyer, which was that's is that the UCS one? I think that's the UCS one. Okay. Which would have been—it's the first time they did a Star Story was the UCS one, yeah. which is yeah. interesting that they don't put the set number for that one below it. So you know, I'll, get, this, I'll, I'll let that one slide because of what it did for the series and for that line. I'm good with that one. Coming in number eight, a new addition to Warminster Brick Shop: the giant truck. Five five seven one. Yeah, little model team, right? It's it's huge. That said, have you seen that? It's enormous. It's yeah. got to be like 18 inches long by a foot tall. It's enormous. Um, number seven, 1990s Airport Shuttle. The first of four sets in a row here that are all in the 60 Years of the Brick. See, I, I feel like this is where nobody voted for the Airport Shuttle. It's <laughs> top 10. <laughs> I, all right, so I got to hear in, uh, in the comments or by the end of the show – if you're that, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're nasty, that do anything what's right? your top 10? <laughs> do we have any fucking childhood memories of the airport shuttle? Yeah. Th ah. This, this screams promotional, uh, material for, yeah. for this I, set that they just put out. The six Maybe years these now. are huge okay. in Europe or something. Number six is the yellow castle. <laughs> number, number five is the black seas Barracuda. Also legit. Conveniently also in there. Commercial. <laughs> number, <laughs> number four is the galaxy explorer. <laughs> which I'll be I'll be honest all classic space sets are the same set this is the one that they made the little version of for 60 years that's, 60 years yeah, that's the one to pick that's the one to pick they're like, all the same set there's there's yeah. like four different ones that are all the truncated version of that one and they all have different 900 numbers whatever uh number three is the Santa Fe Super Chief for all you train nerds <laughs> number three number three number two the green grocer Oh, there you go. I'm down with that one. Of course you are. I know. <laughs> Even though that's not, it's by far not All the right, best. All right, so who's going to guess what number one is unless you saw it already? Uh, okay, so of the ones that are in that set, it's probably yeah. the fucking monorail then. No, I mean, Airport Shuttle was a monorail, so. Yeah, that's but that's the knockoff monorail. The OG monorail came out before that. It did. Futuron, then Cl Airport Shuttle, and yeah. then uh, Unitron. I'll take the Unitron monorail over all, all the monorails, but that's me. 
The Spirius yeah. was fucking shit up. It's got to be something iconic, though. Because again, this is this is more promotional than anything, right? So it's got to be iconic or something that's really popular at the time. I'm gonna go Falcon, actually, Millennium Falcon. Yeah, if it's, if it's the fucking UCS Falcon, it's a good like, guess. I'm it's not right. It's a good <laughs> <laughs> I'll burn your uh, book that took you three months to get. Okay, <laughs> it did take me three months to get this. Okay, uh, number one is the Cafe Corner. Woohoo! Another one. That makes, that makes sense. That makes sense for the modular dudes who are really into that. Like that is that's the, the top ball. ten right there. So they get the the uh, cafe corner is probably the worst modular, but it is the most iconic. I nah, gotta say, dude, main, yeah. our Market yeah. Street is the worst modular. I don't know. There, there's nothing inside the cafe corner. It just looks nice from the outside. Market Street is only a building and a half, and it's super <laughs> empty. Yeah, but again, as a, as as the modular guy, the fact that there's two modulars on that set, I I would have voted for that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so. <laughs> There's there's tons of other modulars though that are like far more impressive than yes. either of those. Like if you're gonna give it like the credit, like what it did, I get Cafe Corners the first. But then like yep. that second place modular spot, I don't know. I'd go like Detective's Office. I'd go I'd go a different way. I would go behind your head, man. Detective Office is probably my favorite architecturally. <laughs> The it is my, my own. That's my yeah. favorite of all of them. Like I, I built every one of them. My, that's my favorite for play features and functionality and just cool stuff in the build. And by then they got this it. highly useless uh, periodic table of elements. I don't. I don't understand what the point of this is. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm confused by that as well. Yeah, I. I don't know how this is helpful for anything. Apparently, yeah. the the master builders use this special table to uh, to help them. Oh, yeah, <laughs> true. Very true. Uh, we have the the Carter Baldwin Sig Fig. <laughs> it's awesome. It's cyberpunk, super cyberpunk. So this they says, haven't. They've never made a VR helmet like like piece for a, a minifig before. Have no, they? I mean it's definitely just a visor that would snap on to any um, hair or helmet that has the pips on the side. Yeah. Well, they've done the the night vision goggles, which can click on the the ultra agents, dude. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so there's a page for the 2010s. It's like decade pages. There's a page for the 2000s, and I'm bending all of the page for the <laughs> 90s. <laughs> they all have like very recent CMFs on them. I like that they're using the Miami Vice fig for the the 80s yeah. page there. <laughs> this is the 90s page. Um, but they have the first uh, Lego website right here. Look at it. It looks That's like Bricklink awesome. does now. <laughs> Yikes! That's the original it's, shop at home, I guess. That's as easy to navigate as Bricklink used to be. That literal 80s, picture. That has a better figure for the '80s. There you go. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> I'd say I'd say Don Johnson or whoever that was not the '90s. '80s has the Tyco propaganda ad. It has a Brick Kicks. It has the Technic figures. The '70s has. You gotta show that Tygo at that Tygo yeah. at metal. Is going to collect, can can you get that on your wall, man? Can you get that on your body? <laughs> that should be a good sticker uh, in the in the clutches sticker program. I don't think. I it feel like be. that's one of those ironic things you wear at a Lego convention. Like, <laughs> can we get? Oh man! <laughs> like going in a Mega Block shirt. That be a shirt. That's gotta be a shirt. Dude, if you make them do a shirt, I promise you, I will wear it to uh, to Brickworld. Uh, there's the 70s, there's the 60s, there's the 50s, and uh, I mean it's 60 years of the bricks. So that's all you're gonna get. And then there's like some molding machines and stuff here, and, and that's the whole book. And then there's uh, oh, a forward. So that that's the thing. That's the thing you, you waited go. months to get. Look at now my you, low you number. Have to worry Look at about it. it. I'm giving my low number away right there. <laughs> Nice. Pretty low number. Okay. That's impressive. Too bad you opened it. It was mint and sealed box before. In sealed this, envelope. This this wasn't sealed. This is open. In fact, it's weird. It has the thing where you can take it <laughs> off and seal it if you want to ruin it forever. So so if you want to buy if you want to buy a sheaf of paper in a sealed envelope for an inflated <laughs> price. Yeah, so this is going back in the envelope until I figure out how much it's worth on Bricklink. That's some that's some Walmart uh, workmanship right there. <laughs> I'll say it again. I mean, the book, the book quality itself, I'm sure, is nice. It looks like it's got that nice yeah. UV overlay with the studs and stuff. You know, it's like it is. It's, 
it's it's a good book. A uh, on it. it probably feels nice and slick. It smells it good. It's got that this smell. This part is real nice right here. Real nice to the touch. This is paper. This is not paper. Um, yeah. And it lifts up on the back, the band here. Oh, I ripped yeah. it now. Um, <laughs> well, well let, let, let's be completely honest here. As one who lives the Lego lifestyle, as you do, who has a lot of Lego books and, and pamphlets and paraphernalia, are you happy with that? Was it worth the wait for the three months? The term is ephemera. And, Indeed. <laughs> and the Lego ephemera and epaulets. Yeah, are you happy with your Lego epaulets? <laughs> epaulets. Nice. And the shake no hat. Um, I, I didn't know what to expect with this. Uh, there's no, I don't think anyone knew what to expect. I think it's really well done. I'm going to steal some of the images for uh, stickers and <laughs> things like that. Maybe a t shirt. Other than that, I look forward to seeing how much it goes for in the aftermarket and potentially selling mine. If I can get like 20 bucks for it, hell yeah, I'm going to sell it. It's you paper. You get more than 20 bucks, I think. Well, then I'm definitely, definitely going to sell it. <laughs> but that's enough. That's enough for me because that's, that's all I got. That came in the mail today. Uh, how about you, Paul? All right. I'll do a real quick screen share here. I got a, a mini haul uh, today. Uh, or not today, but I got a mini haul this weekend. And just to be safe, since we have a guest with us this week, I am going to uh, just do something small or, with screenshots. Uh, so here's what I got from the Lego store this week. What I really wanted, as I'd mentioned last week, was the uh, Easter Bunny minifigure guy. And uh, in order to get that, you needed a $35 purchase at the Lego store. So um, I'm a big fan of this Beach Champions line. So I picked up both of the Ford ones. Uh, not necessarily because they were Ford, but uh, because I like their designs. Um, so we've got the, the Mustang here, and we've got the rally car. Um, I dig the rally car, which is actually kind of surprising. that I didn't. I, normally, I like the more uh, traditional-looking supercars and, and, and cars in general. And I don't really like, let's say, like a, I think a Subaru WRX kind of a car. But this actually looked really cool in hand. So I was happy Definitely to pick up that. It is definitely a Ford. <laughs> and uh, in addition to that, in order to go... This is 30 bucks for those two in order to bump it up to 35. I got the uh, the Easter Bunny Brickheads guy, which we I figured we can put in uh, our upcoming baby room because that looks uh, that, that looks like it'd be something that a little kid would enjoy. So that's what I bought this week. But interestingly enough, uh, in addition to that, I've, I, of course, got the Lego calendar. And uh, there's some interesting stuff in this month's calendar that I wanted to point out. Um, Certainly something that if you are listening to us on audio, you might want to click over to the YouTube video for this one because this is, uh, is going to be a screenshot of the actual audio itself or of the calendar itself. First off, just a quick one, that Lego Vader pod is finally coming back. It's uh, back. It is hopefully actually available this time um, between April 13th and May 3rd with a $60 Star Wars Lego purchase. You can get this guy. Um, I believe... I believe Matt was looking for this or was looking forward to getting this when it was initially announced and uh, when they took them all off the promotion and off the shelves. Uh, I think he's a little bit disappointed. I don't think truly disappointed, but uh, it would have been a fun freebie. And I think now he has a chance to get it again if you'd like. He's not um, fit into that doorway. It's uh, a pretty good one. Did, is that like a printed sticker on the back of these? I don't have any of these pod things yet. Um, it's, I think it's... I don't think it's a sticker. I think it's actually like a printed cardboard piece. I have like one. Or something. Yeah. Like a, the pog. Handle. Yeah, it is like yeah. a pog. It's exactly like a pog that is perfectly cut to fit in that spot. Um, with the with Lego's strict QC, it fits in there pretty well. Well, um, who knows what the QC issue was this, with this was the uh, first time around. Maybe the, it, the pog didn't. The pog kept coming unstuck. Yeah, I can't imagine what it would be. Like, honestly, why wouldn't this have gotten put out like, there's, there's no reason i can think of that they wouldn't have because other than the printed like control panel i don't know what is different about this than any other thing that they've had maybe the helmet is actually different because i think this, this vader helmet might be a little bit yeah different. i think it's maybe it's a clearance issue when it's closed with the yeah the helmet against that grill tile oh good call that could be it 
But yeah, you're right, he, uh, uh, Chris. He'll definitely not fit through that door. It'll be like Dark Helmet in uh, Spaceballs. I wonder sure. if there were were there pictures of this. The first there was because we wouldn't have known it was a Darth Vader pod if there weren't pictures. I wonder if the build is any different in the original pictures before they they uh, canceled it. Versus that's a this good picture. question. For any of you who know or have, who happen to remember the old pictures, leave a comment in the YouTube channel <laughs> or reach out to us via any of our social media and let us know. And we will read it out on a, former, uh, on, a, on a coming show. Um, so this is the, the one thing that was just a quick glance. What I'm most excited about that I saw in the calendar is this right over here. To celebrate 40 years of the minifigure, not to be confused with 60 years of the brick. This is or 50 years on the track. Exactly. This is 40 years of the minifigure. Um, here is an exclusive. Um, I don't think it'll be a poly. It looks like it's big enough that it might be one of those small boxes. Um, yeah, I think that's like a like, printed box. Ew. Yeah, it looks like it's in a box. <laughs> it yeah. does, actually. You're, you are correct. Which is, no, that, that actually made it very interesting now that you mentioned that. Um, but for a $75 purchase between April 1st and 15th, you get this exclusive Lego minifigure fat and everything is scaled to um minifigure size so the mini the mini minifigures as uh as matt had called it via one of our or in one of our chats uh the mini minifigures are the kind of little minifigure trophy scale um those are the mini mini i think that's the first time we've gotten a trophy classic space proper dude yeah, he looks good. Awesome. Uh, they, they did a lot of paint on those. There's a lot of detail. I think the only other one that's painted that I can remember is the Ant-Man one. And these have a lot and more all paint. the ones ads. from the Helicarrier. Yeah, the Helicarrier has like Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Andrew, real quick, tell me if you think it's funny when uh, Paul and Matt refer to all of the, the the detailing on Lego as paint because they come from the, the action figure and Transformer world. I mean, I guess it's printing, which is basically <laughs> the same thing. Like, yes, there's paint applications on your Marvel Legends, but there's also fucking digital face printing now. So in my world, it's all kind of the same. Um, but definitely, like, I make a differentiation between printing and stickers. That's, like, the big the big differentiator because like a lot of times you see fucking like a box set and you're like oh shit that looks awesome and then you're like oh whack it's a sticker or sometimes you're like fuck yeah it's a sticker it doesn't have to be on that part it can be on that part. <laughs> yeah um, that so, I mean, like, everything's versatile to me um i think this printed backdrop thing is kind of a cop out like they should have built the tubes I mean, yeah, I, give me that. the tubes. See, the, I, monitor, the monitor would be such a cool printed part, like with that little classic space dude on there. Yeah, um, see, I I thought these were actually printed. I'm I'm kind of disappointed now that I realized that it, it does look like it's in well, a box. It is technically printed. It's just printed cardboard. <laughs> True. It's it's, it's now I've got to keep a I've got to keep a Lego set in the box, or at least with the box, which well, is I'm not sure it'll it'll the box. In the box though, because it'll have a window. Um, They've been doing that a lot with like a lot of their their collectible packaging. Like I have that caveman thing. Yeah, you can like slide it off, and it's like here's the whole thing. You know, even well, have yeah, to I mean, the the box part that's missing right here is folded down. That's like flat in front of you in this picture. Yeah, so yeah. it all closes up into there. I want to yeah. know more about this radio flyer wagon on the right, and why is it there? <laughs> this the, to haul all of the minifigures that he's created. So he's got so, a policeman, he's got a blue spaceman, there's something red behind his head, there's a, a doctor or an astronaut or something, and then like there's... A, I was well, thinking look, maybe maybe yeah. it's a ship. It looks like Pixel from Ninjago with the purple and the white on the left. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's some zombie motherfucker. Like, <laughs> no, that could be. I thought it looked kind of, like... I didn't know what that one was. I'm going to guess that the, the, the one right before that is like in the, um, the Lego ideas, like women of science set or whatever that one was called. It looks an awful lot like one of those. I, don't, I feel like, so there's this idea book from way back in the day, which is post 84, but uh, it shows like, you know, like the four major themes. So it's like pirate, space, town, whatever. So kind of seems like they would want to squeeze something in that. Maybe it's a pirate chick. I don't know, purple pants is weird to me. Purple pants and like she has a silver head, right? Like that, that I have that's no why, idea what that that's is. why I think it's Pixel from Ninjago. Yeah, it's gotta it's gotta be something newer. Um I wanna know what the red, be, obviously I wanna know what the red one is behind the, the figure. 
maybe that's your pirate or something like that. Like, but these, because the, these are these obviously have to all be Lego owned IP, right? Because that, that they wouldn't yeah. license yeah. that out. So I think I think it's a safe bet that the pirate might be the red, and then the Ninjago one might be the the purple one, like you mentioned. Because that I, seems to be I a safe bet. Only get four. Whatever that red thing is behind there, I'm thinking is something else i mean it could definitely be another piece i just think that it's it's got the right shape like it's slender next to his neck and then it's it's poking out where that the hand kind of is on the figure i feel like as a promo image though they would be totally remiss if they were like we should four of the five <laughs> that come with this That's true. that is uh, true somebody in marketing is getting fired for that for sure <laughs> or, <laughs> that's good because they they're laying they, what do they lay off eight percent or something yeah, let's fire the dumb people. Carter um, was saying that he um he's no longer gonna try to be a Lego designer because they're getting rid of everybody. Oh dang. That's that <laughs> that that should be a, in an episode that we have with Carter of Carter he's, Industries. Yes, yeah, he's easily displayed. It, it also <laughs> involves him not moving to Europe. So, <laughs> yeah. There's there's that small detail. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I am a little disappointed to know that the, to realize now that this is printed on the inside of a box because those <laughs> those colors could easily be like that. What piece is yeah, that? that it looks like it looks like they have a little arrow by the front. Like there's that caution striping around the build itself, and that looks yeah, like yeah. An arrow to the right of that. And that's totally like one of those great vintage classic space pieces that they could have been. Sure. Like, yeah. Well, well that, what that is, and... if you've ever seen any of the videos of their uh, factories, they have all this, like, OSHA out the ass standards <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> like, they've got the striping, they've got the railing, they've got the hard hats, they've got, like, you can't walk here, you can walk here. So <laughs> the, the cardboard flap just outside of view here is nothing but rules. <laughs> Shout out to OSHA. Good call. Um, but I was thinking some of these would be interesting. These would be good to make stickers for your, your sticker program. Like the, the spaceman there, I think, I think that'll be cool. And possibly the cake with the 40 or even that, that whole left wall might be an interesting sticker. Yeah, it could be. I could definitely do that. Um, I definitely want this. I, let's see. So you got to spend 75 and do you know, it comes rule? out April 1st in theory, allegedly, or the, the oh, rumor, that That'd Tron. be easy if I went and got a Tron Legacy set and maybe a bunch of pick a brick. That could do it. I'm gonna guess. What do you think Tron's gonna cost with the two bikes now? Fifty bucks? Thirty? You think thirty for the two bikes? I would have guessed thirty for just the one. We got two then. bikes. We got a very similar set in the Harley Quinn Batman Deadshot set. Well, yeah, but it's, it's the custom minifigure parts that are gonna drive up the price. Like I mean, they don't make any new pieces, pieces right? Yes, it's, it's existing pieces just printed differently. They don't make a new piece mm. for ideas. That's their rule. Okay, and I guess you can get away with like the the brick built discs back stuff anyway. Yeah, I'm going with thirty. With that that being the case, I think you might be right because it, it, there's like they've got that. What was that one? I think it was an Ultra Agent set that had the two motorcycles, right? Or was there's, it just one? I mean, well, every, every year there's a set with two motorcycles. There's a, there's a Ninjago set out now that has two bikes that are comparable size with two figs and some extra fig parts that is 20 to $25, depending on where you go at retail. So, so like that price makes sense to me, but then at the same time, it's like a limited idea set. So it's and the license. It's got yeah, the license. and then there's the license, and you've got to deal with Disney, and you got to like, there's there's a lot more fuckery with it and the packaging is so much nicer on those sets like the instruction booklets are nicer yeah. the packaging's nicer so you're playing a premium like no matter what so i think minimum like what's the nasa lady set 50 uh, bucks it wasn't that it's 25 bucks only i think the nasa ladies one no really? it's gotta it's gotta be more than that the um i don't think so Maybe, maybe you're right. I know the uh, the research institute was uh, was the lowest one yet, and it was twenty bucks, and that was a damn mistake on their part, putting it at only yeah, twenty. So bucks. I think it's I think it's forty. Like, what was the um, fucking Delorean? That's like forty five. Right? It, it was it was thirty five. I think yeah. Okay. See, so, yeah, I think I think forty bucks because you're paying the Disney tax. <laughs> very very true. Very valid on that one. Yeah, I'll go. I, I'll guess forty. So if that is forty, you need another thirty-five bucks and pick a brick to get this here, Chris. That'll be easy because I always need more Travis bricks. 
What's a Travis brick? Oh, fuck. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is why I'm on the show, to learn. Uh, I'm here to learn. Uh, oh, show me, Andrew. Show me. Hold on. Let, let me stop sharing so I can see. Hold on. There. Okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so, it's this. It's oh, that's a Travis brick, brick? With five studs on five sides and an anti-stud. It's called a Travis brick because back in the day, even before my day, there was a dude named Travis Kuntz and he built all these fucking like wicked hover cars. And granted, it was like 20 years ago, so it's super dated, but it, this was his favorite part. And he got this part tattooed on him. Um, and then he tragically died really young. What so a sad story. Thanks for bringing this down. Travis Brick. <laughs> so know your history, a fools. Next week, you'll tell you about Nen. Oh, dude. Dropping the science. <laughs> All right, so um, let, yeah, let me see. Anybody who doesn't know, who also didn't know about the Travis Brick, please leave a comment so I don't feel like an idiot for not knowing that that was called the Travis Brick. It's no yeah, comments there's, were left. There's, there's a category <laughs> which is snot bricks, which is studs not on top. That much. And I- then all of that, there's there's multitudes of names for various bricks. Uh, I've always referred to that one as the Travis Brick because it's like sort of something that I came into the community with. Um, and everybody always referred to that. So it was like yep. all my peers referred to that. It's just one of those things that like has been around forever. And uh, every once in a while, they will have them at the pick a brick wall. In black. And that is the one element where I'm like, I will buy a cup. Like, I won't <laughs> fuck around. I won't stick anything else in here. Like, I, I I'll buy less than a full cup, cup of anything because I don't want to resort it later. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you, your world's different, dude. My yeah. world is like, <laughs> I, I mean, I look at it and I go, "Hey, that's the Travis pick, forty-seven thirty-three. I'm gonna get a whole cup of it." <laughs> oh man, you make me like this is where like the level of nerdum in the Lego community is great because like I just sort of out nerded Paul, and then you literally have the part number, which is like <laughs> levels more. <laughs> like, I don't know the part numbers for anything. Dude. I know the part numbers for a lot of it. All right, <laughs> Andrew, what would you do or get or? Uh, so week? I too bought the uh, the Ford rally car. Yeah, the rally car, the Fiesta. Um, and so like all of the things that I buy are usually for parts, and this does feature a super sexy new part. Ooh, the wedge Ooh. tile. Yeah. Interesting. Never before seen in a set. Two in dark blue, two in black. Um, also features apparently Clutch's favorite part, the black inkwell for the exhaust <laughs> there. <laughs> See, there you um, go, right there, so, people. I mean, that like, that is proof that Andrew listens to the show great. because he was because Chris was very, very taken by the black inkwell. Oh, it's multiple. Wait, I don't. I don't even remember. I don't even remember, I don't even remember this. It's all about the black inkwell. You, you texted me like that. In the context of something else we were talking about, and, yeah, well, and it I, took I, me I, a little while. Like, for days, I watched these episodes, and like I'm just screaming at the phone in my <laughs> car. God damn it! It comes with the fucking speed champion set. It comes with the Bugatti. <laughs> they use a rubber band for the brake light. It's like that. I knew. <laughs> innovative. Fuck. I, I think I knew that from your video. Actually, did you oh, ever have that God. in one of your videos? Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, it's like these sets are super well engineered. And you look at these sets and you're like, yes, it's ridiculous. I'm paying $16 for a car when you could buy a mediocre car for like, you know, $5 or whatever. <laughs> but then like, they're fucking dense. They're great. And you don't have to have the stupid giant hood scoop. It gives you an optional hood uh-huh. for this. I don't know if you know that, Paul. Yeah, it, that's awesome. Drop in so you don't have to have the ridiculous... WRX over the top burner, <laughs> and I will um, I will not have that. Good call. I, yeah, see yeah. I see you don't put the stickers on. Is that so you can use them all for parts later? Yeah, yeah, because everything everything gets recycled. My my process is uh, I'll buy a set, I'll build it, enjoy the techniques, you know, sort of like learn by osmosis, and then uh, it goes into a bin, and then it ends up here eventually. Now, um, now you, you bring up a good point, actually. Before you continue, because uh, as we all know. Chris's building, technique, Chris's building technique stopped at 95, likely <laughs> because, as he says, he doesn't buy retail sets, or if he does, he just parts them out immediately. Do you think yeah. that you are building them is an advantage to your overall build 
a technique, let's say. Yeah, there's there's a level of OCD about all of this, clearly. <laughs> um, but like, one of the things is I just I I feel really weird if I buy a Lego set and I never build it and I just put it in here, um, because it's like, as a kid getting a set. It's an amazing feeling, right? You're like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna get this thing, I'm gonna build this thing, I'm gonna have this toy. And I'm like, yes, I'm an adult and I can just buy whatever the fuck I want. And like, <laughs> do I want a seventh X Wing or whatever? No, I really don't. But there's there's things where it's like, as now being like so deep in the hobby, I've seen A Folds get poached from the A Fold world and go work for Lego. So it's sort of like I'm engaging with them in this really like super disconnected way where when I build a Mark Stafford design set or an Adrian design set, or like I know all these dudes that came from like the April world who are now, you know, th there's a reason that Mecca is big in Lego retail sets, like beyond like, you know, it's kid friendly and all that, but also cause there's, there's a bunch of April's working there now. So it's like, there's sort of like, and, and they have, a lot harder of a job than like a dude like me where my budget is wherever the fuck I want it to be, whatever I can afford. Their budget is super constrained. They have yeah. to do like, all these things. So when you see something that they do that's super clever, that's within all those restrictions, um, it's really, really crazy to me. Like there's their Lego is the highest tolerance manufacturer in the world. And that's crazy, but then you look at like the set design and it's like, they literally take a model and they stick it in a fucking oven <laughs> for 20 minutes. And they go, well, if your model fucking melts apart because you build shitty, it's out, it's out. So it's like, <laughs> you, you've got to do like the bar is set super high and then you come in with something like this, you know, it's like, that's really, really clever. So like that Bugatti tail light, like you got to look that up, dude. It's one of my favorite speed champion sets and the way that tail lights the tail light in the real bugatti is this like super thin led bar right yeah. it's a dollar fucking super bar and the way they do that is they trap a rubber band around ink wells to get a three point angle which you could never do with like a real lego part but you could do it with a rubber band and it's just the right scale it's fucking it's it's poetry dude it's fucking beautiful <laughs> so I don't give a fuck about like owning that car. Like that car is a set. I don't give a shit about at all. Getting to experience that is really cool. It's really meaningful for me. And then I have that moment and like I take whatever I take from it and then it all fucking goes back in here. That's very cool. Which is a bear because every time I get Lego, I'm like, fuck, I have to build this stupid set that I don't want to build. Like, <laughs> oh, dude, oh, like, I'll get into the next thing after this thing. I bought this set on clearance. It's a fucking elf set. This is a perfect segue. <laughs> Lego elves, awesome. This, dude, this is straight Walmart clearance. Look at this, five dollars. Swoop life. I, I couldn't life. say no, dude. It's it's fucking normally twenty bucks. This How is much 20. do you love those little goblin things? I, I give zero fucks about them. Like, look at this <laughs> look at <them. laughs> basketball trap. Who gives a fuck about this dude? But at the same time, there's a new root piece. These are fucking like dark azure. That's great. Everybody loves dark azure. Like this to me, it's like, it's a bear to build and it's stupid. And I have this stupid little elf hut, but I build it and I'm like, okay, now I can move on. Now I can fucking do something else with it. I find this fascinating, and one of the reasons that I actually agreed to do to, to be a part of the Building Up To It show is just to see how different people view these kinds of things. I am, as we all know, kind of a, a retail builder. I follow the instructions. I do a little bit of free building in general, more more to enhance the sets that, that I already have. But in general, I or more than in general, 90% of the time, I follow the instructions and then we'll enhance from there. So, like, I have this set, the, uh, like, which one is this one? This is the yeah. Outrider dropship attack, dropship attack the from triangle. Yeah, Flying triangle. Avengers, which is pretty much a useless set. But I got this because I think it's, so far at least, the only set that has the uh, minifigure for uh, Black Widow and for 
unmasked cap and it also has one of the infinity gems which is ridiculous to me that there's an infinity gem in like a, a ten dollar set or whatever but that's how lego rolls man like yeah it's if, awesome if you want to be a baller and you want to get all five you gotta yeah. drop four hundred dollars or whatever it is yeah so you, you like, got like the hundred dollar set the ten dollar set the, the five the fifteen dollars or whatever it, he'll get the <laughs> infinity gem dude like that's, i mean that's basically a battle pack like i love lego small sets because of that like outreach like yeah. like you're not going to get thanos but you're going to get an infinity gym and you, you and, actually and get you four in america yeah you like, get so many of them in each set because they're so small it's like one of the smallest if not the smallest lego piece ever produced uh next to that little like uh disney animal tiara crown thing that little yeah. tiny like sliver that looks like it's gonna go into your skin every time you look at it. It looks like that's gonna impale me. I, that's gonna be inside yeah, the, my hand. The OG Clone Wars, the side of the helmet thing. Yeah, they're still, yeah. They're still smaller than that. <laughs> are they? Okay. Those parts are really small. Yeah, it's like dangerously small. But you get so many per set that that's gonna be the new watered down useless piece on Bricklink, like the stud shooter triggers or friction yes. pins yes. or. Um, <laughs> Probably the the range finders and the antennas and all that for um for the clones because you got that bag of them every single time. I, yeah. I feel like it's still it's got the Star Wars effect though, where like the value of those always holds because it's somehow related to Star Wars. That's true. So versus, maybe this one holds. Like, I'll, I, I'll I'll bet the the gauntlet with all the gems if you get a complete set that way will go for a ton of money. But I think the oh, the gems are oh, individually you know, probably. There's, there's lazy motherfuckers who are just like I want Thanos with the gauntlet. Oh, it's five hundred dollars. Check. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the, what they go for, I will I will sell mine. I don't have it yet, but this is me starting to to go. Well, over I like that <laughs> set. Like, dude, that's not a bad set. You get one of those spider dudes. I'm curious to see that dude's backpack. Like, and you know, you can't. You can never have too little. Like drone army troop builder <laughs> dude. Faceless faceless goons, basically. But yeah, yeah, so so I look at the set and I see the minifigures that are there that that I want to get so I can complete my minifigure collection. You look at it uh, and then you see different you see different builds and and things well, like that. Clutch sees well, it in all different example. parts. I look at this and I'm like, "Yo, this is new." Yeah. This is well, weird. they use that in cars a lot. Do they? This is the they, first time I've seen they this. They did. They they used it in cars a bunch. It was usually printed. I'm pretty sure it's the same piece. What's um, that piece okay. number? What's the piece number? Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. It's newer, so it's going to be like a 12,000 range. Like one, two, something, something, something. Um, that's either neither here nor there. Uh, Andrew, did you yeah. get anything else? Uh, I did get one last thing. Because, you know, it's the final Toys R Us exclusive set. Oh, oh, no, I'm sad. Now it's terrifying sad. giraffe molesting these children. <laughs> it's an even, ugly giraffe, too. It's so Don't awesome. even open it. Just wait like... Wait dude, like a like, year and then suddenly like, that unibrow that in your so face, good. dude. What's up? Just wait a year and then when it's like a fifty dollars set, just sell it and buy a bunch of shit you actually want. No, no, I'm, do this I'm going savage on this, dude. I'm gonna crack this open. Like I just for the fact that like <laughs> so the whole thing of like Paul, you buy these sets, right? And you own I them. I do. Cool, I got them in my collection. I do kind of the same thing, except my collection looks like this. Yeah. So I just know <laughs> in my head that Jeffrey, his spirit was eaten <laughs> alive in this wall. <laughs> There's not even anything unique about this. Like these, just, these parts, these stars are stickers. The stickers yeah. Oh, are there stickers? stickers? That's yeah. um, Like this is only worthwhile if you keep it in the box. Can you, can you make a mecha and then <laughs> attach just like the neck up of Jeffrey as like the pilot or something? Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I could definitely dick around with some, some Mecha Jeffrey shit, you know? Dude, if you do that and you sell it on the, the Bricks on the Dollar uh, Brickley shop, I will buy one. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Toys R Us Mecha Giraffe. <laughs> so yeah, also, <laughs> I just want to say, for those of you who are wondering, and Chris, so you can see, this is I've got a close-up of that Bugatti, and this is the taillight that, uh, that Andrew's talking about. That's the rubber band. It's awesome. That's genius. Yeah, and then the underside where it's got the the curve, the inverse baby bows, those curved slopes, inverse, like 
it's it's just super clean it's super nice it's super dense like all the shaping works um and you know it's funny it's so like toys r us is out of business <laughs> and this was the toys r us exclusive line only which... for the first wave really okay yeah I've... I bought them at both the Lego store and Toys R Us. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've never the seen first... them at a retail store other than than Toys R Us, though. Other than the Lego store as well, I guess. I think they're at other stores too. I know the first wave was only at Toys R Us and Shop at Home. But even because yeah. that that was the weird period in time where the Lego store wasn't carrying other stores exclusives, even though they had every right to. <laughs> that must have been some sort of uh, concession they made to one of the companies. But uh, I, I got a slight topical question on all these new parts for Andrew. Andrew, do you think the one by one round plate with the hole through it is starting to replace the one by one round plate? I kind of hope so. Um, I, I'm it, seeing a ton of them. Like in, in, in Jago City, uh, every instance of like a one by one round plate was switched out. Almost every instance. Oh, oh so I the, think the... I think actually there's one of the designer videos about that. And I think there's, or some interview or something where I think that's actually intentional. I think that's one of those things where it's like, there's an A full on the system and they were like, <laughs> yo, so I could just give you the one by ones, but this one thing I needed the one by one rounds. And it's actually, it's, it's a ease of use, like a ease of instructions thing where they'll, they would rather give you all one by one rounds with holes than like half and half, because yeah. then you're more likely to fuck up. Yeah, or than, or split the colors where like this color is only gonna appear in the the one with the hole, yeah, and that color is yeah. only. Gonna appear times building with shit that's like not seen, and you're like, why is all this like fucking random lime or whatever in here? <laughs> it's, it's because there there's been so many passes on the set design. So you have a dude like me that's just like, I want to make the fucking Joker mobile look as pimp as fucking possible. And then there's a dude that comes by and goes, this is inefficient as fuck. <laughs> Redo all this. And like your build doesn't necessarily change, but it, it does in ways that like are sort of invisible to the end product, but the experience changes. So I think, I think that one by one round thing, possibly, but I feel like the Ninjago city is maybe like one of those things where it's like, it was it was desired to have like a a one by one round for one element of it and that just had like a cascading effect all the yeah. way down. So the uh the nine eight one three eight begot the four oh seven three. Anyway. <laughs> Andrew, you got a shout out you'd like to do? <laughs> shout out to nine eight one three eight, I think, right there. Yep. <laughs> Man, I, I feel like a gangster with no area code right now. I don't know any of these part numbers. <laughs> I know some like, weird, outdated technology about like you name things after dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Ludacris and, and, and Nate Dog would be very disappointed in you. Rest, God rest his yeah. soul. <laughs> yeah. Well, all, all my parts live in one area code. So. <laughs> Wait, was Nate Dog part of that song? Uh, area codes was Nate Dog. He was the one who he was the voice of R and B, the one who sang in that part. I uh, got hoes. Okay, I never realized there was like I never realized there was somebody else on that track. So what's this shout out? What's the first of three shout outs in a row? I've got two more after you. So okay, okay. So we'll we'll do a we'll do an IG shout out here. I'm gonna do the fancy thing where I screen share and hopefully not fuck this up. We will you may, see. You may fuck it up. All right. I'm the only one that can fuck it up real hard and stop the broadcast. Uh, I'm assuming you guys can see this. Yes, you're good. All we right. Can. So my shout out is uh, the homie Tim Schwaffelberg. He's got a fuck ton of followers already. So you guys may or may not have to click the, the follow button. It's up to you. Um, the kind of interesting point that I wanted to bring up with this. So I've watched a couple of episodes and you guys are like, oh yeah, Instagram, Instagram, Flickr. That's where like the a full nerds hang out. <laughs> yeah, bro. We used to all hang out there. It was the shit. And then like, not necessarily the, the community fragmented, but like Flickr just started fucking up. So naturally the community sort of divided apart. Um, so anyway, 
long story short, uh, I followed Tim on Flickr forever. I met him at a convention, and then he's recently just started doing um, Instagram. And it's it's amazing because it's all like Flickr level builds on Instagram, which I feel is is <laughs> very rare. You kind of you tend to find people that photograph minifigs on the beach or like you know do things that aren't at the level of something that like a, a Flickr interface would really be better for, which is like hang out on a long time on the image, check shit out. Um, but he's he's fucking bringing it, so you guys should definitely follow him. He's a Canadian Lego building engineering student. He's got a website because he's fancy like that. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm not going to go through too much of the photos. I just kind of wanted to like give you a a level of something and somebody that is in my world that I really respect. That I everything he does, I'm like fuck yeah. It's like he's hitting on every level. He's hitting on parts use. He's hitting on photography he's hitting on every single one of these um so a couple of these these are some speeder bike entries for the lego speeder bike contest that just happened um a little more interesting to me is his like landscape studies so there's four of these here uh you can see this beach one which i think is really cool because it's got the water sitting oh on that is cool you kind of get to see underneath um and then you know he's also done these tree studies which is, is that a kid fisto head in, in that water one, the beach one? Yeah, hey, well, we'll do a little zoom in. Kid yeah, it's the kid <laughs> well, No party's useless, dude. Every part has a has a thing. Do we saw uh, some like Andrew some of your pictures of the? Um, I think it it's like the the octopus like goon from Ninjago the Ninjago movie on the beach. Looks great. Looks awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, you know, it's, sometimes you gotta do a little bit of both. Uh, this one in particular, I wanted to highlight. This is one of his tree studies. Fuck. Check That's that chain. Out. That's chain? That's awesome. That's chain. That's chain. And it's it's superbly done. Like, it, the the loose studs in the bottom. With I kinda, the whole. You know, with I kind of hate whole. all this technique a little bit. But at the same time, like, for this execution, everything else is so clean that it yeah. works perfectly. The potting is even really well done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dude, he's, he's a gangster. He knows what he's doing. Um, this also, I wanted to highlight, this is an airbender showdown. Oh, that is awesome. Look at that technique, man. Look at that technique. Like, uh, I, I can't zoom in on my terrible screen share, but the, just the <laughs> stud control of the, the water and the, the fire effect there is fucking amazing. Dude, Paul, when are you going to build? When are you going to build, Paul? Dude, when I'm a huge build? fan of, of Avatar. If I could build mocks like that, I would. Um, and then crazy. check this out. This is try. crazy. So he, he's a fucking well talented, very oh. diversified builder. Look also, at that texture. For shit. Like, super well done. The texture on the lighthouse is fucking superb. Does he display a show still? I think. Uh, yeah, I, I saw him at last year's BrickCon, which was pretty cool. Um, trying to find some kind of like more interesting mecha shit because i know paul's a mecha dude he he does a <laughs> lot of this micro scale stuff um a lot of spaceships so if you just keep your eye on his flicker or fucking likewise his oh, Instagram, man. that at. one looks like votoms man that fatty boy up there we'll make that for dust and dust can use that only if you give it to him already assembled <laughs> Look at that! He's got an iPhone with with the old school like earbuds. That's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. And like for me, for me, like I I lean towards sci-fi mecha. You know, nerd look at that shit. tank. Can you click on that tank? I've seen that tank before. That must have gotten ripped off by one of those uh, Instagram um, guys that just yeah, shares other people's um, stuff. Look at those so tank tracks. That's this, awesome. Part of this is Tim has done the Iron Builder contest. Which yeah. This part is the seed part for that particular iron builder. So he's got the tank. He's got this super gangster yeah. futuristic city. Now, is that the one with the notch in it, or the one without the notch? I think it's the one. It's the one with the notch. Okay, okay, because he's hiding it, and like he's hiding it very well in that. Um, the one with the um, I don't know, the revolutions around. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, and there's a level of perfection with his photography, obviously, that is really great. But then just as, like, from a building perspective, you know, I look at something like this guitar, and he's using the notch strategically. Yeah, yeah. it's really well done. Part of the element, 
Like, so it's, it's, it's really great. Like he's, he's obviously a fucking talented dude. Um, so I know, you know, go check him out. It's fucking cool. Um, he also builds other shit. I mean, iron builder, I feel like kind of propels people into the big leagues where you kind of have to do things outside your comfort zone. <laughs> Hang on. Go, scroll up. Uh, or I guess scroll back down to scrolls. Um, there was that one guy that looked like he, he had, he had a brick separator as a head or as a hat. That he was wearing. All right, let me let me go find this dude. It's near the bottom, yeah. Yeah, it's near the bottom. Center row column there. Ah, yeah, yeah. So there that, you go. Yeah, that's genius to use the brick separator as a hat. If that's a brick. Oh separator. man, you're getting you're getting really blown away by the the strangest <laughs> things here. Dude, it's, um, the, it's I, using actually, useless parts as other things. Incorrect. I believe this was a challenge to use the brick separator in a build. <laughs> I might be talking out of my ass. I don't know. I um, dig it. But yeah, I mean, like, the dude's obviously, you know, uh, he's a master of his craft. He does fucking amazing work. He does great photography. He deserves the follows. You guys should fucking definitely go check him out. And uh, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's one of those things, like, every once in a while, like, I, I thought about um, actually doing a totally ridiculous shout out <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Which I <laughs> do not. Um, but if you guys are on Instagram, you should go check out Brickster Dad because Brickster Dad, all Duplo. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> and he doesn't fuck around. He doesn't fuck around. He makes legit Duplo mocks. So there you go. So I'm going to go do that real quick. Good on you, kid. Um, it's really funny, too, because I've met Tim and like he's really unassuming and a fairly reserved quiet kid i mean he's a nice enough kid and shit like we've hung out but it's it's one of those things where it's like god damn dude you're just dropping the noise like constantly and he's super humble about it he's just like yeah. oh paul paul <laughs> this, this uh uh richard scary cat thing dude this dude. is this is great <laughs> and, and you know what's crazy is every one of his builds because they're duplo they're like two and a half feet tall but, yeah. yeah, dude, I have a, we've we've got a baby on the way. These will be perfect to use Duplo for the baby room. <laughs> oh, dude, Duplo's so good, man. I have this like reserve of Duplo. Like I have yes. a couple of sets. Look, that's Optimus it, Prime. It, that's outstanding. Of course, you picked the Optimus Prime. That's for Brian Brick. <laughs> that, that's for Brian B out of Delaware. Brian B yeah, in Delaware. Yeah. First time, long time. Shout out to Brink. <laughs> Brink is a closet oh. April. The first time and only time I've talked to Brink, he showed me a Technic truck. He built on like one of the back in the day when the ROC hangout was the ROC hangout. Is that yeah. Earthworm Jim? Yeah, it is. This is one that I want to build right now. <laughs> Brink's uh, Brink's never hidden, and he's an a fool. He's he's been on the show, and um, we talk Lego. He he gives me Lego every time I see him. He just gives me Lego. Sorry, <laughs> like he buys all the the holiday stuff, like you do, Paul. But then he'll buy it on Shop at Home, and he'll get like. This and that poly bag because you spent a certain amount, and you'll be like, oh, I don't fucking want this. And he gives it to me. So, last time he gave me the, the flashback shredder and the Lego store employee bags, just like, here you go. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Uh, all right. So, I got two shout outs in a row, real quick. This is going to be a heavy shout out show. And then, after we go through these, we'll jump over to, uh, to talking talk about Andrew and uh, Bricks and Beer and all that. Yeah, we so, should talk talk to our guests at least a little. That's <laughs> okay. We don't want to. We don't want to just spend the whole day talking to Andrew. You can, do that. you can go check out his whole show, which you will anyway. This is Minifig a Day with underscores on Instagram. They uh, they actually shop at my store, and they were in, I want to say, two days ago, and they bought this chicken, and the butcher. They bought them from me. And they said we do an Instagram account, and we we do a picture a day kind of challenge, and it's mostly mini figures. So they wanted obviously to do this picture, so they bought these two from me, and everything's hashtagged out the ass, and they got this big thing because <laughs> they they must have run out of um, like humorous ideas. So now they're just like, okay, like what is it's National What Day? Let's um let's do that. Not not in like a negative way, even though it sounds like that. But uh, they're doing a great job. They're doing a great job. I like uh, that. But, That's a great shot too. Honestly, it's a, for those of you who are listening on audio, which hopefully you're not. But uh, <laughs> this one's great. Is the the chicken suit guy being chased by a shadow of uh, the butcher with an axe in his hand? So it's actually yeah. very creatively done. 
Um, <laughs> you're so, no etiquette. That, I'm a big fan of of, uh, of stall etiquette. So this is this one speaks to me here. So I maybe their, their challenge might, in fact, be what's it the national day for, and what can we make? How can we make that funny and uh, a good photo? So. They've got lots here. I don't know which figure specifically they bought from my store beyond the uh, the two they bought the other day. But that's an, that's an impressive they, challenge to just post. Content yeah. Oh, it looks like. Day. All right. So it didn't start that long ago. Um, they've got 32 posts. They got 143 followers. So go give them a follow. I uh, when they mentioned they do an Instagram account like this, I said, "Oh, what's your name?" And they said minifig a day with the underscores. And I start typing it in. And they're like, "There it is, the top one." I go to it. And then it immediately says, follow back. So they already followed me. I was like, ooh, awkward. And then I followed them. <laughs> I actually said that out loud. So go follow Minifig a day uh, if you'd like. They do, they do exactly what Andrew talked about, the uh, figs on the beach. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hating on it. <laughs> you do it yourself, so. Yeah, it's, it's, lots of your pictures are on the beach. That photo and saying a Tim Schwaffenberg masterpiece and like there's there's merit in both i don't post shit every day like if you post <laughs> every day that's work it is work <laughs> you can see how often i post and most of the time it's not lego so <laughs> i do it for some, the show <laughs> they got some cool stuff yet paul does it just so he can show it to us later and force exactly. it at us. the <laughs> other the other one i wanted to do was we were talking last week about how this week we would mention modifications to Ninjago City because it's a big, awesome set, but you can make it so much more awesome with how modular it is. So I had been seeing posts by Keith Lowry on Instagram with an underscore, and I don't know anything about Keith. Maybe one of you does. I don't know anything about Keith. He seems to have a lot of minifig photos as well. Yo, you look alpha. What is that? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> uh, hey, look, Alpha One Rocket Base. It's that poster you have. It does Man. look like the poster you have. Well done. It is the poster. That's, I know. <laughs> that's the set. So it's mostly minifigs here, but it looks like he's taken on quite the challenge more recently uh, with his expansion of Ninjago City. Yeah, look at that. That's incredible. So, it looks oh, like, I mean, you can it. definitely see where the stock It's crowded ends. as fuck. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be. Oh, I, can, I just understood. It's, it's on purpose. I think it looks awesome. You can see where the stock ends and his begins, both aesthetically and, um, I mean, there's a pretty good line drawn there from the, the scene from one or the other. He uses a lot of elements from other stuff. Like this is from Joker Land, the big Joker head up here. There's the camera and the phone from Dimensions. And probably there's the bacon strip flag from Takadana down there. And let's see. His other shot, he's got this back alley shot with just... It, he took a lot of elements from the original one, and he just did it his own way. And there's some yeah. rockets and the rocket boy. What I really like is this chimney um, and how it's, it's three-dimensional. It's bumped out from the rest of the build, and it even turns halfway down to go straight down uh, slightly to the left. I, I think that's really well done. The street is just as crowded as I'd want it to be. <laughs> and uh, I'm digging that's it. What you can do when you have all those minifigures. You can make your streets crowded. <laughs> I like the uh, the repetition of the two-by-two two turntable plates there. So it's like there in the original set, and then there's yes. like that, that tying element between the two. Yeah, the air conditioners, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another slightly different angle of uh, the whole thing going on. And I, I did see some other posts. I can't find them now. Some some group of people are working on a fully fleshed out Ninjago City rebuild for an upcoming convention. Because I saw photos of this um, Venice-style waterway kind of going between two sides of this street for lack of a better term, kind of cutting the city in half. And it was full on Ninjago City on both sides of it. I thought that was really well done. Uh, if I could find that, maybe we'll look at that again next week. But shout out. It's a, real it's a popular it's a popular venue for people to expand upon. Um, at the last BrickCon that I was at, 
there was a, a mother son sort of team that had done maybe like a, a six foot by four foot layout that was really really impressive and they they had bought i think four or five ninjago cities and sort of integrated them in to expanding that but like that back shot is so money like i actually like that better than the front um the yeah, color yeah. control on that stripe that orange level mm -hmm. that's that's super well done and it it mates with the green there really yeah. well like it feels very very much connected i feel like if you crop this a little bit tighter it would be it would be like charm city brick style perfection <laughs> where there's nothing outside yeah, yeah. of the shot up. You just cut out this like left inch here and the right inch and maybe bring it down a little bit and it's all you see is lego all you see is how much hustle and bustle there is here and fuck the street signs these vertical street signs come on that's awesome i don't know where are the those, hell they're are from those custom printed or like i was gonna say I, I don't i don't know where you can get those i i don't know either i mean maybe they're in one of the other ninjago sets they, they certainly seem like they could be they're not in the city there's plenty of sticker options. The uh, the newer Ninjago yeah. sets to this like bike gang theme. This fucking like sons of Garmadon yeah. on acid. <laughs> they got they got a lot of really good stickers that go with that that I can see merging in. Yeah, he's got some of those guys in the front, like <laughs> the little short Juggalo guy here. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's wild, man. Ninjago's the one theme. Like I thought Chima was wacky because Chima was like. Fabuland meets Battle Beast meets like whatever the fuck you want. But like Ninjago, they were just like, so we were fighting skeleton monsters and then we were fighting snake monsters and now it's just cyberpunk as fuck. <laughs> with it. Um, other cool standouts. I said this, this little satellite dish here. Uh, I really yeah. like how tall this archway is where it's, it's overly tall for like a minifigure walkway, but you could fit like a, a small bus or something through there real tight but on purpose but it just i like how, how high up this starts when it could have been more building but it's not yeah i i like the uh the rooftop foliage there too i'm not sure if that's from the the joker in the that's, front yeah, that's the side of the joker is that be joker's so here it's on the roof yeah the rockets they got balloons um I don't like the airplane windows. I think it doesn't fit. Yeah, it kind of descales it a little bit. Yeah, and the uh, I think the Chrome Darth Vader or whatever this is inside this capsule is, I don't know, he's kind of going for like a look at my minifigures section for the um, the stores yeah, on the top half, really like up here. The, the Joker face, because it just sort of like detracts from all the work he did. It's yeah. Like, man, you built this extra building and you sort of like tack this in. Granted, it's a cool graphical element, but like, it's very obviously the Joker. Like it, it yeah. does. Yeah, like and just go go either let your building speak for itself or do something original. Or oh, hell, even like even if he swapped the two tops, like instead of having this be the stock set on the left, and then this is all new creation on the right. If he took the top chunks and switched yeah. them, yeah. so it it just kind of. Uh, varies it up a little bit. That'd be nice. I do like the way the whole boardwalk aesthetic continues. Yeah, around that's the corner cool. here. Yeah, yeah. and then, and the, then the, he's, the he's got the docks more realized down here, which is nice. Well, I think I think for you, Clutch, like as you continue to evolve your your Ninjago City, I think one of the things that you should take it from a, a play in Carter's book. Go up, dude. You don't need to go yeah. out like that footprint there. That that little bit of water and the extra building. If you basically, you know, double it in in footprint. Yeah, this is twenty by twenty inch right feet. here. Everything else can go up. Yeah, like and it's it's even cooler that like every year. So like let's just say you keep building on this thing for years. I know you won't, but <laughs> this is you won't. Um, every year you build like a new footprint to it, so it can just you can fucking like re-slot that floor in or those combination of floors i think that's the coolest thing about the modular system is that it encourages people to do their own thing and like to, to fucking like add new floors and you know whatever um so it's like it's there's tons of possibilities with this 
We'll see what that dock set does. Like if it, it, as cool as the Ninjago City is, which is the only modular I want to buy that I don't own that I probably will end up buying. But I, I don't know if I need more unless it offers a really exciting new footprint to go vertical from. I think, I think it is going to go vertical. We, we saw pictures of, I'll stop sharing this. We saw pictures of a uh, preliminary one and it doesn't the picture we saw doesn't really line up with the price point that they they are proposing for it so i'm thinking there that's like the bottom floor as if the there there were on the floor right here not here anymore but the yeah. instructions for ninjago the city underworld level or whatever yeah that's it's called. got him like grayed out so you only see the one you're working on i feel like what we saw was just the bottom level and it w will be maybe as tall as this, maybe as tall as the roof and not like the extra shit on top, but as tall mm. as the roof. And what is this? In oh. Interesting. It'll Hang be, on. It'll be as, as Hang tall on. as Can what you, you got. Can you see that? This is more than what I've seen pr previously. Oh, hold on. Stupid notification. Um, you're doing the thing, Paul. There you go. Can you can you see that now? Yeah, um, and holding... all the audio listeners, Paul's holding his phone up to the camera. Yeah, I, I'm sorry yeah, to have to do this. It looks like a blurry garbage, uh, but <laughs> I, I see it. But I don't see it being able to elevate much beyond that, which tells me no. It's it's, it's, be... it's too thin. It's too yeah. wiry. That, that feels like a retail set. That feels yeah. like a hundred dollar retail set. But the thing that could be missing from that is if they include a vehicle, if they include some ship or some bullshit okay. that goes with it, which is very yeah. retail set esque, which as a direct to consumer set, you would think they would be like, forget it, like just put put the budget where it needs to be instead of like the play functions, because that's that's one of the the really interesting things about the modular sets to me is that like every other town set that you would get, right? So you pay $100 for a town set, you get a car and a helicopter and, you know, whatever. And it's like, instead of having that, they just go like, why don't we double the budget and fucking ax the vehicles and we'll add another floor to the police station or whatever it is. So it's like, it, I think that those prelim images Unless, unless it's like provides you the ultimate footprint to to fucking rock out from, I'd be like, ah, I'll just do my own thing. It's fine. I I want to get it if it snaps onto this and provides me a new larger footprint than just this. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. If it's if it's meant to look like this, but it doesn't connect or it doesn't flow from this one, well, it has then to, it has to connect, right? I mean, like I really hope it does, but if it does, like this has pins because it's it's a modular building. You put it in your street with your helicopters and your and your your park and your police it's and all that. Expensive. It's not cheap, right? Like it's half or the same price as the city set. City was what? How much was city? One? Uh, no, it was expensive. Like almost two something, right? No, it was, it was two something. Yeah, it was, it was almost three because that's yeah. the only reason why I haven't gotten it is because it's right at that oh. threshold where I go like. Hang on, um, I have the uh, I have the uh, the, the this, catalog in hand right now. The Jago City is three. Three hundred, two ninety nine. Yeah. yeah, it's two ninety nine. It's it's modular pricing. It's it's you know it's a yeah. If, market if square. This, market if this one doesn't connect to it, but it looks like it's the same aesthetic, then then I don't want it. If it connects and allows me to have a new template for a footprint to build up to build out to build wherever then, I, then i'm interested because i i could certainly stand to have some more of the water section and maybe figure out like why there's so much water on the bottom of it if there's a dock with like maybe yeah. they got some yeah. badass ninjago so spaceship that's gonna land there could do one or two stories if it's that same density and like creative parts usage like that crowbar uh oh, the, the 19 crowbars yeah. that just on top of a flex tube that just bend down the slightest bit yeah yeah if they if they like the bar is set really high already yeah. and then you're not having it available outside of you know like the super nerdy lego channels i don't know and maybe that's maybe that's better for it because they're like we could never sell this at toys r us period because it's an add-on to a 300 dollars set 
and it's 250 and it yeah. doesn't look as impressive but if you if you get into it it does like i don't know it's it, it'll be interesting to see where they go with this like as much as as much as you want clutch for this just to keep going you're like every year every year <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I, I think it's like three years <laughs> I'm skeptical on this thing because, because I mean, you guys have both. Have you guys both seen the movie? I know that uh, Chris, you have. I have. So, like, the, the, in in the oh, docs, <laughs> in in the docs in the movie, like that's where they store all the mechs, right? They have that big, like, that that big, like, building that houses all the mechs. There's no way that they could the do hanger. that. Yeah, yeah, they've got like a hanger. Yeah. They keep all their their right. robots in. But that that's in the docks or on the docks in in the movie itself. There's no way they can do that. So I'm already slightly disappointed, knowing that I can't store my mechs in there. You know, so, be the worst is if they put out the docks and then the docks pair perfectly with the Destiny's bounty, but you can't get it anymore. Well, but but you know that's the master plan, right? It's like <laughs> it's got to. It's got to. That's why I said it has to come with a boat, because like you can't have yeah. a dock without a boat. It's gotta at least have like a little noodle cart boat or something. You just you know, like some <laughs> bullshit. Like I would buy it for that. <laughs> of course That's you would. Awesome. That's I'm awesome. Okay. I'll, I'll brick link that 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 portion of it. I'll I'll get the parts for that because I would love a noodle cart, like a noodle boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody would. That's what makes your cyberpunk city a cyberpunk city. Damn straight realism. I'd eat the shit out of some ramen right now. All right, that's what I had before I started. <laughs> Yet again, uh, Chris Griffin is more Asian than both of us. <laughs> <laughs> you I mean, can tell I by got, his bright red beard. I got the Gundam. I got the Ninjago City. I was eating the noodles. Um, <laughs> I'm eating like I'm drinking. My beer is like Scottish inspired, Irish inspired. Yeah, it's I, Island I beer. beer. Like <laughs> clutch has the trifecta. He's uh, <laughs> working on the power up right now. <laughs> that hair, that hair is all gonna just gonna go out. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go super saiyan on us wow. right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, Andrew, uh, why don't you share with our fine listeners and viewers uh, just who the hell you are and what you're doing here? Why, why am I on this show yelling at the internet? <laughs> well, clearly you know a lot about Lego. Why? Yeah. Why do you know yeah. so much about Lego? Why did we uh, decide so, to have those oh, shit? Paul questions. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Here it comes. I'm ready. <laughs> Go at it, Paul. Go at it. Why is it that you know so much about Lego? Because you just seem like your standard Asian dude from the, from the, the West Coast. But they don't all know about Lego. They know more about, like, well, import cars and all that kind of stuff. How do you, you know, know about Lego? You know that scene in uh, The Dark Knight Rises? Bane's talking to Batman. <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, so I was I was born into this a little bit. Um, that's Bobby you know, adopted scene. the brick. That's, yeah, that's yeah, Bobby exactly. Skullface's so, favorite scene right there. My my mom's an artist. She's a crazy weird hippie lady. Uh, so I got Duplo as a child, and then um, sort of just like Legos always been a part of my life. Uh, like really, like I I got toys as a child. But the Lego was like the toy that always kept giving. Like, so it, most A foals my age talk about the thing of like, I built X wings before there was an X wing, and like it's it's completely that. It was one of those things where I was like, fuck, I need Luke Skywalker and I need an X wing. And there's the Dark Ages between 1985 and 1995 or whatever, where there were no Star Wars toys but I had a pile of Legos. So it was like, build that. And then I got really, really nerdy, heavy into battle tech. And I was like, all about giant robots, <laughs> Get build fucking giant robots. And then like, you know, life progresses and you go to college and you do this weird shit and you hang out and you try to bang girls and stuff. And like, while that was happening, there was still sort of this like back burner Lego thing of like, I hung out with a bunch of nerdy dudes and we were all like weird art nerds. And then I was like, oh yeah, into Lego, yeah, cool. And then like, slowly the Lego kind of crept back in. Um, but post-college, when I moved to LA, was really like when it got heavy. Um, and it's funny because I talk to my wife now, where I'm like, you remember? Remember like back in the day, like when I had that one hover ship on that one shelf in that weird room I lived in? And she was like, yeah, I didn't know it would be like this. Um, so. <laughs> 
basically what happened is in uh, 06, I moved to LA, I got like a, a real gig, and I, I started actually interacting online with the LEGO community as a whole, um, which it trips me out that that's like fucking over 10 years ago. Did you interact via Flickr, by the way? Let's ask that first. So the, the first real pre internet site I ever used was Brickstone. <laughs> Because, you know, it was the dark ages. <laughs> and um, Brickshelf is like, Brickshelf is, I'm, I'm trying to think of like a uh, equivalent to it. It's, it's so clunky and old. It's so shitty. It's like going to the library and just like walking down the aisles and being like, I hope I find a comic book. Like it's one of those things where it's like instead of using <laughs> the card catalog, you're just walking down dusty aisles. Um, so it's like, there, and there's no social components to it. So in college, my roommate was sort of into all this nerdy shit and like in the Lego and stuff. So we would, we would jump on the brick shelf and we would see that there's maybe conventions out there. Like there's photographs of this room full of Lego and like not really photographs of people. It was just like, here's a photograph of fucking a bunch of shit. And we would be like, we are on these people. Who are they? <laughs> Um, so then I, I moved out and, you know, I did all my own things and like that brick shelf experience somehow led me to a long defunct website called classic dash space.com, which was the central conversational hub for a fulls, meaning adult fans of Lego that were into space and classic space and Mecca and sci-fi, like all the things that attracted me. So I started like having these super, you know, what what nowadays is like nobody talks on forums anymore. People have like much more <laughs> eloquent platforms, but like posting on a forum under a pseudonym of like, here's my photo of a space rover. Like that was amazing. And that was sort of like this watershed moment. And because of that, I actually ended up meeting people in LA and within six months, hanging out with people in their garages and being like, I'm not alone. You have <laughs> more Lego than I've ever seen. And this is amazing. And then you like fast forward 10 years and it's like, I've been to 10 years of conventions. This is my primary hangout with all this fucking ridiculous bullshit behind me. Um, and so it's like over the last decade, Lego has become and it always was a part of my life, but now it's like, it's not the part of my life by any means, but it's unavoidable how big of a part it is in my life. Like you walk into my house and this room is kind of off the entryway and it's just like, people people like want to look at the rest of the house. But then there's <laughs> like, and I always tell people this, I'm like, yeah, so it's like, you take a child to the zoo and you're like, yo, yeah, so let's let's have a conversation about like uh, what you could eat for lunch. And there's a tiger behind a glass wall, like right next to you. And you're like, yeah, I don't want to talk about lunch at all. I want to fucking look at this wild shit over here. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of that thing where it's like, now it's unavoidable that this is what I do. And by <laughs> that, it means that I'm living the quote unquote Lego life, I guess, you know, it's like, it's it's a it's a big part of my life. It's definitely uh, it, it's so that's how I know so much about Lego because it's like <laughs> everybody I hang out with that's not my wife's friends, pretty <laughs> much bunch of nerds. Um, my fucking favorite thing to do, my annual trip, is to fly to Seattle and hang out with a bunch of my fucking fellow nerds and just bathe in the Lego and take it in. And then like outside of that, so it's like. There's sort of that watershed moment where you go like, oh, I'm not alone. Holy shit. There's other nerds that are into this. Cool, right? And then as you sort of like that, that becomes more normalized, you're like, oh, man, these people are becoming like my best friends. So I've known dudes for literally 10 years where my buddy Zach, this is a perfect story. Is he a Lego we maniac? Met we met him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's kind of. He, he does kind of look like him. He's got red hair a little bit. All the now, because we've known each other for a long time. Uh, shout out to you, Zach. Uh, but, but so like, 
the first time I met Zach was we had talked on these classic space forums. I went to my first Lego convention. I stayed with three other dudes in a hotel room, none of which I'd ever met. Zach had also never been to a Lego convention. And I was like, are these nerds going to murder me in my sleep? <laughs> what the fuck is going to happen? And we met at the airport and he was wearing a Guinness hat. And I was like, I think we're going to be friends. And now we have like, <laughs> a decade of friendship and he has multiple children and like i've seen all this crazy shit happen and so it's like that's just a dude that i know and like yes he's a lego dude but he's also you know one of my my closer friends so it's like those are the people i hang out with all the time so yeah, uh, that's that's very cool that's, that's probably where it comes from it's it's a long time thing it's like it's it's kind of a trip because like in the beginning it was always like you tell normies like, yeah, I'm into Lego. And they're like, oh, cool. And now I tell normies like, yeah, I'm into Lego. And they go like, oh my God. Cause they come in here and then I go like, yeah, decade, decade <laughs> more hardcore than you ever thought was possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for those of you listening on audio uh, behind Andrew right now, there are, from what I can see just visibly, there are, I believe, 700 shelves of Lego pieces that are all kind of organized beautifully and immaculately. 700. So I, I counted and just did the quick, the arithmetic math. Like, from what I can see in the screen, there's at least seven down and 10 across. So that's at least 700. That's, that's, 70. that's 70. That's 70. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's 70. Uh, I don't normally drink beer. So it's, it's probably right. about 140. There's, there's at least 70 and another another double probably there. Oh, he's so, he's cool sitting on a bar stool, or he's sitting <laughs> higher than yeah, you think this, he is. This is this is about half the height, and then there's another wall. Okay, so, so there's 140 shelves of bricks, just pieces that uh, that that Andrew uses. So that clearly, like you mentioned, if you were to walk into a house and saw a room that is filled entirely by shelves, filled themselves with bricks, you would ask questions about that certainly, and I understand it's, that. It's, it's a giant elephant in the room. It used to be worse when I lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and this was in the living room. <laughs> and, like, literally, you, the door was right here. So, like, people would walk in, and just be like, oh, wow. And there was <laughs> no way to hide it. I at least have a door now if I'm, like, you know, my wife's friends are coming over. I can try to shut the door. But it, at this point, like, it's, it's such a big part of my life, and it's such a ridiculous thing. I'm just, like, on front street for the most part with people. <laughs> So my next question then, is this your Lego room or is this the hobby room where your wife has hobbies that she also yeah, has no, in that is, room? This is the Lego room. Uh, so <laughs> we bought this house and this this sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. So I, I lived in a, a one bedroom apartment basically for like 10 years. We had various apartments. And we live in a, a fairly nice area of Los Angeles that is very expensive. And it was like that the apartment that we had prior to this was amazing. I literally lived two blocks from the beach. Like I could just walk to the beach two blocks. Is that where you took all of your pictures of your minifigures and your Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all like down the street. It's still walkable from here, but it's not that close. Like that close was gangster close. Um, so the caveat for me going from being debt free to me taking a whole bunch of debt was there were three checklists, right? Had to get off street parking because parking where I live is ridiculous. We needed to get a yard or at least a patio so my wife could have a dog. And then we need a room to put all my bullshit. So I <laughs> only the master bedroom in this house, which is ground level for two reasons. Number one, security. I didn't like having a ground level sliding glass door into where I sleep. Sure. You know, you got to grab the ninja sword quicker than the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so like that was my my logic for why I this room and then it was also Sorry. like and by the way i can fill this with all my bullshit and it doesn't have to be in the living room um you so, see yeah this is a dedicated space i have a dedicated table i would show you that but it's covered with a top secret model right now Ooh. Um, but yeah i got i got i got a couple of things it's it's pretty cool there's a uh, two closets over here that are like because this was the master bedroom, you know, they're normal closets, but I turned one into a bar and one is uh, like sort of entertainment cabinet deal. 
Um, so it's, it's a good hang. Like it's it's pretty rad. Uh, when Clutch was here, Carter actually ended up staying in this room because we have a real guest room next to it. <laughs> but we had some friends who were the Germans. So I was like, Carter, you're in the Lego room, and he was like, the Germans, hey. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. When I was there about a year and a half ago, that uh, the Mtron mock on the top right of the screen, that was what was uh, oh, that was, yeah, that was, that was, that was what was like the secret just off camera piece was the, the yeah. basis for that. So this for those of you uh, listening, I believe that was episode 32 of Andrew's show, Bricks and Beers. Oh, whoa. Uh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> you can check that out and see Clutch in all his glory. You can see Carter of Carter Industries in all his glory, just sitting awkwardly on stools and talking and drinking beer. And you can <laughs> watch uh, the... He's been on the show twice, and both times he's been pretty quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch One the complimentary video. Probably when I'm here, so I can, you know, nudge him into <laughs> to being here. We'll see if we can get him on next week. He's not doing too much with his life right now. But... Uh, yeah, when when uh, if you want, you can watch the complimentary video to Bricks and Beer episode thirty two. It's called Behind the Beer, which was a, a second camera angle with a, a bonus like hour and a half of footage. Yeah, that that'll give you more of like what the actual room is like. Like this looks pretty impressive behind me, but when you see the full angle, it's like oh, it's just a room. <laughs> it's just a room filled with Lego, but but again, what what is most impressive is that it's immaculately organized, and that's that's the biggest part, and the part that even my wife was very impressed by, and uh, I showed her the, the 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 display right behind Andrew while Andrew was uh, a little we bit off screen. Like the cleanliness. We we had a conversation earlier about like Lego rooms and whatnot, and how I was able to pull this off, and part of sort of like what built up to this was seeing a number of my able friends over the last 10 years who are all, you know, successful adults. Um, and they, they have various iterations of, you know, a hobby room or a man cave or whatever. Uh, but, but shout out to my, my homie Gary back, back pre-divorce Gary. He had <laughs> the, the cleanest, most organized, beautiful Lego room. My wife was like, if you do that, that's cool. <laughs> that is you, the, I, I could insert a list of names right now. Don't do that. <laughs> that's actually the trick I found, at least with my wife. She is she is understandable and 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 she will is agreeable to clutter or display of things that she has no care about as long as it's done well and Easily. done in, in a classy yeah. way. Exactly. So like these shelves that are normally filled with with my, uh, my our architecture sets that now have architecture on the top and then all like holiday sets, that's all her. Um, I didn't have floating shelves with mine because to be honest, most of my collection of Lego is not built. They're in boxes <laughs> except for the modulars because those can be displayed very well and very consistently. And uh, if I want to do the thing that would crush uh, clutch to to no end. I would put I could put them all in detolfs and lock them in 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 their own little prison. He would hate it, but I could do it and it would look beautiful. <laughs> yeah, one modular <laughs> per section. That's the whole part is you want to have them on one line. You exactly. Three. See, our, our our true goal is to ha is to be like the end of the the Lego Movie, where like you have that whole like cityscape on on a big work table. That's the dream, but um. In the interim, until we can make that work, we may just detail fit. Who knows? <laughs> so, all right. So, 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 Andrew, my next question is: Since you are you are a longtime member of the Realm of Collectors, I know that you were actually involved with um, Decepticon Click before it was even Realm of Collectors. So, you've been involved oh, with these yeah, people yeah. for a long right. time. What else do you collect? What else? What What other hobbies do you have? I know, obviously, Lego is oh. the big part, but what else do you? So what else to my wife fancy? all the other hobbies like she understands <laughs> this and when i bring home some big dumb thing where i'm like look at this bat cave or whatever fucking bullshit it is she's like <laughs> number one it won't be a bat cave forever and it'll just go in the wall and that's fine so my my balance is i i try to do the lego like the lego there's it's one of those things uh fucking like there's really <laughs> no non-justification for me buying cheap lego like i'm like 
it's fucking cheap Lego. It's what I do. It's recyclable paint. Like I, I sold her on this thing really early that it was like, it's art thing. I'm just buying paint. I'm expanding the palette, like whatever. So it's like the Lego goes crazy, right? So then the things that I do that she hates are as follows. I buy, as Clutch would say, mainline retail trash Hasbro Transformers. <laughs> Yeah. yeah! Woo! I'm a well, I'm a, a child of the '80s. I love I love me some some like yeah the '84 '85 is great, but like Hasbro right now it's a fucking great time to be a nerd. You you want all the Decepticon Target Masters? They got you. You want all the fucking Headmasters? They got you. So I got all this shit, and it's good that I'm in this room now because there's a little bit more room to spread out. Um, so I do a lot of Transformers. I try to stick to G1 Decepticons. That's kind of like, that's the, the focus. But there's, there's some other shit that slides in there. Uh, I collect a little bit of like Ninja Turtle-ish stuff. I've got a, a decent retro collection of bad guys. That's cool. Um, I, I've got some of the Nickelodeon figs. Like it's, the thing is, like, like all nerd franchises, they're literally going like, yo, you remember that time that they made the Triceratons and Fugitoid <laughs> was cool? Got you. So I'm like, oh, fine, fine. Um, that one thing from that one scene, you remember that? Yeah, we're yeah, doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, like all fucking red-blooded Americans, I like Star Wars. So I, I, got a, I got a good amount of Star Wars stuff. I'm, I'm a little more selective now than I used to be. Two tubes. Uh, yeah, two, two tubes. tubes. My boy. My boy. <laughs> <laughs> if they make a six-inch two tubes, I'm in. But I, I Dude, cannot fuck with a three and three-quarter inch. They make, a, they make a life-size two tubes. I might just have that motherfucker in the closet. <laughs> Dude, if they made a life-size two twos and a six-inch two twos, or even a Hot Toys, I would probably buy all of them. No, that would, three and three would, that be, would that be the trigger? That's what would push you into doll life? Dude, I, two -two? <laughs> well, the thing is, I loved Rogue One, and I, your picture of your three and three-quarter two twos on the beach looks awesome. So I may that that may be it. To be honest, it, you know what? Like that that to me. So like I, I have some six-inch Star Wars shit. Like I've gone in on the Black series. I, it's all at work, which kind of helps, and I'm <laughs> I'm restraining it to two things: OG Imperial Troopers, including Rogue One, because I I consider Rogue One OG now. Mm -hmm. So like, all that's all that's cool. That's all canon. Death Troopers, Shore Troopers, all that good shit. You see Troop Build. You got I got the new Vader, and then Bounty Hunters, and that's yeah. kind of what I try to restrict my my three and three quarters to. I also throw the scoundrels in there, so like, you know, build your own bar scene. Um, yeah. the, Andrew, like, that, that's like my favorite part of of watching you talk about the things you you acquire for your collection. Is it's like it's like a fine art collector where you're like, look at this fucking crazy alien I just got. He's outrageous. He's gonna go <laughs> so great with my other stuff. Look at him. He's got all these horns and spikes. And look what, can you even name what color he is? It's insane. Yeah. I love I hearing like, you talk about. That's the part about Star Wars collecting. Like, I don't really want, like, in-canon characters outside of, like, Darth Vader and the Bounty Hunters. I just want fucking Dick's McFuckface from the cantina. Like, look at me. I'm a fucking weird alien. And I'm a robot. And, like, whatever. Like, that's, His name that's is Yak Face. It's Yak Face, not Fuckface. Dude, I'm, I'm all about Yak face <laughs> and his other friend Facebook. And, you know. <laughs> and then fuck a Yak. So, exactly, that guy. So I do a little bit of Star Wars, and then uh, I do I do a little teeny bit of the uh, the off sprue life, a little gum claw. There um, you go. It mainly, it mainly had to do with a, a trip to Japan that I went to, and I came back, and I was like, oh, fuck, it's back. I need to <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I did some of that, and then and then the collection that I have that actually is probably like the coolest, more unique collection of like the toy collections is uh, there was a show in the '90s called Exo Force or Exo yep. Squad. Exo Squad, it was a great show, great cartoon from the '90s. Exo Squad is legit. It's one of the best shows ever made, um, and the toys by Playmates are fucking amazing. And, and as like a mech dude. 
like, dude, they're so good. So I, I have, um, I have like a handful of my childhood childhood, meaning I was too old. I was a teenager buying exo squad toys. And then I recently I've, I've purchased a few more here and there. <laughs> um, so I, I got a shelf of, uh, exo squad, which I, I, I cherish. That's pretty good. Dude, I dig uh -huh. the Exo Squad stuff. Who is your favorite? Uh, who is your favorite, and who is your least favorite? This should be fairly easy for you to come up with. So, oh uh, well, well, I mean, like, so the favorite, the favorite's sort of split, right? So, like, Torres is the most badass. <laughs> what about um, J JT Marsh, man? Nah, JT, he's he's just the pretty boy, dude. Like, he's, he's <laughs> but but dude, the Alec Alec has some demons, like. And then uh, I've always threatened my wife that I'd name our child Draconis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, he can go by Drac by for short. Sure. Like, what are you talking about? Drac. That could be good. Takaki would be also, also be good. You can do that for a kid, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, if, if I'm going to after a fucking Exo Squad character, it's definitely an EO Sapien. <laughs> you're, you're gonna name something ridiculous like typhonus <laughs> uh awesome. and then outside of that i do a little bit of gi joe i also restrict myself to some fucking arbitrary parameters if i'm only gonna buy cobra troopers um and, and i only modern like I, I don't have much nostalgia for gi joe but i love like troop building kind of shit um so like the there's and there's ridiculous shit like the hazard viper like the the hazmat dude i'm like fuck yeah this is metal as fuck um <laughs> pretty much like all my gi joe stuff i yell like this is metal as fuck <laughs> like, it's just like okay <laughs> do you have like a whole army of bats that you have and something like that no no i only i only got one bat um and he came in a three pack and that's the only reason why i bought him but like he came with the saw viper and the saw viper that dude's gangster shit man if you run around with a submachine gun dressed in purple <laughs> I'll just with you. <laughs> very very cool so uh let's see uh chris clutch do you have any uh, you have any questions before i come up with maybe one more that i might ask um <laughs> no, that I mean, I just wanted to throw in the part about how I, I love every time he talks about some creepy alien that doesn't make sense, but he needs it because it's beautiful to him. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's part of part of the life, bro. Yeah. Like it could have been it's like mel melted in the sun on purpose, and it's it's even better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I I want like I mean like that's the ultimate thing with Star Wars, right? It's like fucking side character, side character, side character. It's like, all about the universe. Okay, so then actually, not the question I was going to ask, but again, real quick, as a, as just a side question. So you um, did you like Rogue One, and where do you? Oh, yeah. did, and then also, did you like Episode Eight? Um, you know, you know what I didn't like about episode eight? There were no ATSTs. There was no uh there was no Empire. There was a Dude, ball set. Episode there. episode wow. eight had those knuckle walkers, man. Those things are even bigger I than ATS. Talk about those. Did you see how awesome those were? They did nothing. They sucked. <laughs> they sucked. They couldn't even like, kill Luke's ghost. Those bastards. So, I mean, like, dude, but to me, of the new Star Wars films, Rogue One is perfection. Yep. And I think it kind of fucked up because they did that. And now everything beyond that is going to be shitty because there's never going to be Darth Vader just murdering motherfuckers in a hallway <laughs> ever again. Because that, that's the one thing. You can give me the shittiest Star Wars movie, and then you're like, by the way, Darth Vader's going to crush a fucking at at with the force i'd be like <laughs> all right all's forgiven never gonna do that. and they were like this one's for you dudes here you go <laughs> you know what's fucked up actually about that scene right so it's all dark and you hear him breathing but you see no chest lights and what that means is that motherfucker was so hardcore they was like sneak up on these random nobody soldiers Nobody important. Not my son who has the power of the force. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn off light support so I can sneak out of the dark 
and then ignite <laughs> the blade before I turn the breathing machine back on. Dude, like, that's some deep shit. That's awesome. I didn't even think about that aspect of it because it was just so badass. My original thought. That's the internet. I've seen it out there. But <laughs> next time you watch Rogue One, just just pay attention to that. That actually makes that scene more metal for me because I'm like, yeah, <laughs> right. Dude. You, you committed all the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my very, my last question before we start to wrap up here is we are a little bit longer than we normally are. Woo! So you can you can choose between two questions that I have. Okay. One, the first, first question is, the first question is, how did you end up hooking up with Clutch, or how did you meet Clutch? Or the second question is, what's all that shit on top of your shelves? Oh, oh, those are those are pretty good. The Clutch one's pretty boring. Clutch. Okay, like then do your, do, your, do your shelves, and then we can ask when when Carter's in the show. We can ask how you guys all hooked up and ended up on uh, okay. bricks. And, and uh, so I don't know how much of this you can actually see. So the big sword, the big dumb sword. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that was I did a, a contest called Iron Builder, which is uh, sort of the creme de la creme of a full contests. Um, dude, Clutch, are you just housing that string cheese? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a human eat string cheese like that. Don't you string it? <laughs> <laughs> He's no, not a man, I'm not a big oh. fan of like getting your fingers all over the food. Like every part of the food, every single okay, part. Okay, hold on. Wait, secondary question. Do you eat bananas <laughs> like that? <laughs> no, but for, for you, you audio to to hold let me explain too. what just happened. <laughs> I looked at it. I looked at my screen, and I saw clutch. And you, you guys all know how string cheese works, right? It's two layers of basically saran wrap around a cheese log, and you split <laughs> them. And then normally, what you do is you hold the cheese log and you string it like a civilized human being. <laughs> the clutch just grabbed the two ends of the plastic and then like deep throated the entire <laughs> cheese log while never touching it. It was fucking surreal as shit, dude. I'll do it again if you want. I, I don't. I don't think I can handle that. <laughs> don't screen share that. Um, so, yeah. so Iron Builder, uh, basically, it's like Iron Chef. Um, they give you a part. They say, "Hey, here's a part. It's a one-on-one -on -one competition, and you build for a month, which is fucking ridiculous." Uh, and when I did this years and years ago, this was my my coup de gras of the final build. Um, it's Klingon Batleth. I'm not yeah, a striker fan, but my my competitor, my my homie Simon, the first build he did was a Klingon dagger. So I kind of felt like it needed to go full yeah. circle to where I could build the ultimate Klingon sword from the part, and the parts of silver bionicle part that's lost in the maze of bionicle up there is that simon lou yes the one and only simon lou uh, I know him as well. him. Huh? nice <laughs> yeah, yeah uh and then uh over that way i got some mtron shit that's from uh moonbase collaboration i did two years ago and Whacktron. whack whack lug the infamous whack lug uh, that's me and my three homies. It's Jeff, Maro, and Zach. Uh, we've been working together for fucking ever now. Uh, we've done collaborative builds since 14, 15? Um, so four or five years now. But we've all known each other for like 10 years. Um, so I built a, a giant moon base that had magnets and shit. So that's nice. What those two remaining buildings are from uh there's the detective's office there's a bunch of other shit a lot of this is like x iron builder shit i'll just grab this because you know it's there um here's a oh, dragon that's cool. uh i built this because i bought all of these crazy car parts in olive green they come in that uh chima set that boat set so i was able to buy them in bulk so I was able to do this, which is pretty cool. You know, was that a Cal Brick Lab? Yeah, yeah, the homie. Shout out, to, uh, shout out to Lewis and Romy. Yeah, man, they're they're good people, man. Like every time I see them, they're they're fucking. I, yeah, I hope they're gonna be at Philly next month. I look forward to seeing them again. They sell my posters at the all the conventions they sell at. 
Right on, right on. Yeah, they're they're cool people. Um, and then like the rest of the shit, it's just kind of miscellaneous stuff. There's a few other Iron Builder stuff. This is, you know, that guy's poster. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, Woo! Over here is one of the weirder inserts I've ever received. This was prior to them making this part. Um, so they were supposed to roll out this part. Actually, I'll, I'll just grab it off the wall. So they were supposed to make the one by one with a clip, right? This? Yeah. But they didn't in time. So they told you, <laughs> oh, by the way, you can use the better way. And this, yeah. this was folded up in a set. Um, Do you remember it, what set it was? I don't know. It's from 2008. So, there uh, <laughs> Also, by the way, that little guy down in the corner, I, I just ordered a sticker of that picture. I was going to say, you should be a sticker. That little guy should, the, 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 the X over that one part should also be a sticker, to be honest. That would be a yeah, good sticker. So it's, it's like, you know, it's one of those weird moments where you're like, oh, I was there. Um, so, and I don't know. I, it, like, the shelves, like, I don't keep a lot of stuff on display. Uh, my, my philosophy, basically what I was telling you about, like, how I tried to get laid was like, it's all reusable. <laughs> so anytime I build one of these like big dumb spaceships or something, it hangs around for like a year and then it's just like back in the wall. Like <laughs> let's let the potential recharge and we'll we'll do something cooler with it, something different. Yeah, Paul, how many times have I talked about the potential? <laughs> Always, every episode and before and after every episode. <laughs> well, I don't know about that many times, but I, I talk about the potential. Uh, my favorite part of Lego is the potential. It is. That's is, that is definitely true. And in all honesty, that is, despite the fact that I am a by the instructions builder and, and, and I like, I take inspiration and I have no problem building something that someone who is paid by Lego is paid to design. Um, I do. The, the thing that I always fall back on is the fact that these are all just tiny plastic bricks and can really make anything in the world that you want as long as you're creative enough and you're you're willing to just think about it a little bit but e even despite the fact that that is my 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 bottom line tenant with with lego bricks i still like building <laughs> by instruction which when it, when i'm in the presence of of a clutch uh, of of a, of a and Andrew Lee, like it, it, I do feel slightly ashamed, but um, but I'm okay with it still. <laughs> well, I mean, like here's the thing: like not not everybody is gonna be at the, that same level, and if you appreciate it, then that's cool. Like, it, there's plenty of people who walk in here who just like eyes gloss over, and they can't tell the fucking retail transformers from the unique original content that I built out of Lego, like. You're you're at least on that level where you can when you're building sets you appreciate things you know it's like there's there's levels to all of it and I think that I don't, don't want to come off you know because I know many of your audience is probably people like you guys where it's like I buy majority of sets and retail product and you know I I enjoy it and I do a good time with it and you know you guys modify where you modify but like there's still value in that. It, to me, it's more respectful of, of you being able to buy sets and like recognize that than per se, you like buy an action figure or a transformer. Like appreciating the engineering of like purchasing a transformer, I don't think you quite have that same level where it's like you literally build something from the ground up. You're like, even if you're following someone else's plans, you know, it's you're, you've got a, a deeper understanding of how things work. Shout out to Sweatshafts, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. So um, we, I, I, I appreciate everything that you brought to this show. This has actually been a lot, a lot of fun for us. I know that you and Chris have gotten to talk and hang out a lot, but being my first time meeting you, I really, this has been a blast for me, and it's been great to see just yet another perspective on this hobby that we have that with Lego bricks and, and how yet another person can look at 
the the Lego sets in the stores and and think about it in a completely different way. So I think that's really really cool. Um, I know that Matt feels the same way, and he was a little bit disappointed that he couldn't be here while you were a guest on the show as well. So hopefully you'll be able to come on the show again in the future, and we can all kind of chop it up. And who knows, we can get Carter in here as well, and we'll just Word. make a big Word. old party, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think there's there's definitely a possibility for me coming back for sure, uh, just depending on scheduling and timing. And of course, know, so yeah, for those of you who don't know, bullshit. but uh, outside of that, like I, I, it's been a good hang. I think you guys should definitely have more a foles on. I think it's a it's an interesting perspective that you guys haven't like fully covered yet. Um, and it's it's nice to see the varying perspectives between you know there's. There's so much that's associated with being a, a quote, quote fan of Lego, um, you know. Yeah, we, we we like that, and and like we're just just in, within the realm of collectors itself. We are kind of scratching the surface of the Lego fans that are in the group because it, in general, there's not a lot of people that are at least very vocal about the fact that they like Lego. But I know that there's there's more than just us that, that enjoy it. And I think that this show has really helped to bring some of that out and bring some more appreciation of the hobby out there, which is which has been very, very good. And getting an additional perspective like yours certainly helps to kind of become more relatable for other people. And there, because I know people like, like Spiros likes Lego and he likes 40 K and, and there, there's certain sets that he likes just to, to build from, for the aesthetic alone, but being able to see things like, um, like, like in your, in your feature today, Andrew, that there was, there, there, there were tanks and there, there were mechs that were built that were inspired by a 40 K contest that was there, a beer and uh, not beer and bolters, but a, uh, but, but a 40 K yeah. contest to build stuff. I think well, that is great. There's sort of this, this amazing thing now that we're so connected as a society where you go, you just Google Lego blank and like, <laughs> it will come up yeah. and somebody out there is doing that and somebody is is participating in the hobby in whatever interest you have and like whatever you're into and like whatever your level of participation in the hobby is like i'm cool with it like i, I tend to kind of come off as an asshole particularly on the, the somewhat intermittent podcast that i do where i'm like bitches it's thug life you you've got to be rolling as deep as i am but i I, I do get that perspective where it's like, holy fuck, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you're, you're so hardcore. You're more hardcore than anybody. But at the same time, like the reason why I say that, and I'm like, well, the reason why I'm not like totally crazy about that is I know a gang of dudes who are equally as hardcore as I am. So it's like, I come from that world. And then like on the other side of that fence, you know, is is the world of you guys. And like totally there's parts of things that like I'm as much as you were like, oh man, you know everything about Lego. Clutch is throwing down part numbers. I'm never <laughs> gonna be able to do that. Like, you know, it's 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 different facets, it's different strokes. It's you know, there's yeah. there's a myriad of different types of fans of Lego, and uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. And you know, it's it's good times. It's good times just to kind of like mix it up and talk with people and get you guys to appreciate things and. Yeah, no, I, there's plenty of there's plenty of informative shit that I just glean from shit that I'm not really into. Like I'm not really into retail sets per se, but then like I hear you guys discuss retail sets, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, cool. All right. Oh, there is right. a car. Oh, you know, nugget or or even you know, it's like so some of my favorite weird Lego things are just like places like New Elementary where it's just like all parts, like here's the new parts that came out. Like, I don't know, it's, there's there's a whole spectrum of, of resources and fucking worlds and our, our Lego world, as small as it seems to people not in it, is so big and there's yeah. so many different parts to it. Yeah, definitely, very cool. It, it is a, it is a, the hobby itself is as wide as the opportunities to build with Lego are. So that, I think that's actually very, very cool. Um, what yeah, do you I think, Chris? I recommend you all go out and check out Bricks and Beer. It's, it's search Bricks and Beer on YouTube. He's got like 40 or 50 or 60 episodes. I don't know. It's up there. Some of them are long. Some of them are short. But uh, they all give you original Lego content. 
original builds, fun stories, great guests, and I really hope that this experience tonight had somehow makes Andrew more willing to uh, throw in another hangout with, with somebody from afar, not just from his Lego room. Oh, for sure. This is this is actually the, the first legit, like, through the internet podcast I've done um, as far as, like, actual live video content and whatnot. So it's, it's a first for us. Normally my show is uh, it's very unprofessional as you would say uh, so this is this is kind of a new thing you know hanging out with other people that aren't actually in the room so it's uh it's it's great it's great yeah how is Hopefully that different is, is it is it a different experience do you do you like it more or less or is it just different in general compared to what you normally do with uh with your show so it's it's a little bit of half and half so the show itself is always sort of ridiculous and live but then the sort of the thing that built up to the show, the thing that I've always wanted to do was every Thursday, me and the inner circle of Wacklug have a video hangout, which is exactly this, except we just geek out on whatever we're working on or whatever. Um, so I always wanted to do that as, as a like true live format, but just we can never get our shit together. <laughs> so there's there's elements to it that like I would love to continue to do this every week like it's just uh it's a little rough on the schedule you know people are adults we all got adulting to do um but yeah it's good it's good i dig it i dig it awesome well uh for those of you who are on the youtube you can see andrew's social media contact information on screen now um for those of you listening um, if you want to follow him on YouTube, it's youtube.com slash users slash wintermute3. No, just, just type in bricks and beer. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> as, as Chris mentioned, just uh, search for bricks and beer. Um, he's also on Flickr if you search from there. Or if you uh, want to search for him on Instagram, um, he is at aglee13. Um, Chris, do you think we should uh, wrap up the rest of the show for yeah. now as well? Yeah, we can do that. Awesome. So Chris is going to put our contact information on. Um, by our, I mean Chris, myself, and uh, and Matt, who is still not with us, but is with us in spirit. Yeah, it's by the time he comes back, it's really going to seem like he's never coming back, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we, like always, would like to thank all of you guys for watching us on the YouTube channel. Um, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you think we deserve either of those. Either way, it's going to help us out and help us to get content that you guys actually like and enjoy. Um, please leave a comment on the video if you have any questions, if you want to leave any feedback if you want to give us your top 10 lego sets of all time Fuck if yeah. you love because you know they're all different like, that, that top 10 was just bullshit <laughs> if you love andrew and have been following him for years please let us know if you love his playing on batleth and think he should build something else for the star trek universe let us know and we will reach out to him and make sure he is aware as well for any of you who prefer to listen to your podcasts, as God intended, as opposed to watching them on YouTube, even though we are a very visual heavy show, um, we are available on iTunes and Google Play. We would appreciate any feedback on either of those avenues as well. We, of course, would like to shout out all of our brothers and sisters in the realm of collectors, uh, of which Andrew is a member and has been a longtime member. Make hey, when sure are we getting bricks and beer on that list? Talk to Bobby. Talk to Bob. <laughs> we totally should, and see if we can get we can get you a tile on his uh, on his yeah, famous yeah, table. Yeah, we'll replace that eight weeks one. That, <laughs> <laughs> right on top. <laughs> if any of you would like to interact with us on Facebook, uh, we are on the Facebook page Realm of Collectors, as well as our individual pages as well. Um, also, you can check out the Realm of Collectors Instagram page at Realm of Collectors, and make sure you follow the hashtag Realm of Collectors, as well as hashtag. Building up to it, just for the heck of it. Um, and clutch gonna, points. And also clutch points. See if we can take over clutch points and make it all about Lego instead of about, uh, well, maybe with the with March Madness going on at the moment, clutch points might be overwhelmingly about NCAA basketball. But uh, any other time, it may be us. Um, make sure you check out RomanCollectors.com where you can see a lot of stuff with all the different shows that we provide here in the Cool Table Network. And for those of you unaware, the Cool Table Network is a 
conglomerate of nerd related podcasts, which unfortunately does not include uh, Bricks and Beer, but it does include shows like Enter the Realm, Breaking the Mold, Figure Banging, Stasis Lock, Nerd Rage Radio, and Shattered Cast Uncut, both of which Andrew listens to as well. Then there's also Plastic Fanatics, Toy Detox, Beer and Bolters 40K, Eight Weeks on Occasion, and Fresh <laughs> Communication. I gotta, All of these I gotta say, uh, shout out to James, the fucking nerdiest of toy nerds. That oh, dude. dude. That dude goes deep. You guys want a six hour journey? <laughs> Drop in. I'm, a, I'm on that journey most of the time. Yeah. Fucking awesome, man. The toy fair coverage, like that's that's where I go to you. Because I know that dude's just gonna, <laughs> gonna give me every detail that I need. If any of you want to know anything about any show or any anything related to pop culture or nerd culture, Check to see if Plastic Fanatics has an episode on it. And if not, just reach out to James because or, to, or actually to Victory Saber 77 as he's known on all social media. And he'll be able to pull something together for you by he'll, the next he'll week he'll and make it, it a five hour show. I requested <laughs> Dude, if, if James is even remotely listening to this like <laughs> 10 minute deep outro, get some <laughs> Squad episodes up. Exo Squad. We want to. I asked him for uh, Ronin Warriors, and he's like, yep. <laughs> ah, that's a good one, man. That's a good one. I got a Talpa fig, man. Dude, like, I, I looked at <laughs> – we should talk about this off air. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bitches. All right, all right, we can do that. Uh, James, do an episode on Exo Squad, which would be awesome. I can lend you all the episodes on DVD if you want uh, that I picked up at a TFCon a couple of years ago. Um, anyway, all the shows in the Cool Table Network, they may not all be family-friendly. This episode in particular is very language heavy, but they are all part of a friendly family.